record so I don't forget. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. I have 12 noon on my account and on my uh, clock and many of you are here. So I wanna use our time well today. Um, welcome, it's uh, been a while, Lisa and I were just talking, it's been a while since we've done one of these Lunch and Learns. So we wanna thank you for joining our first of our fall 2022 Lunch and Learn series. And this one's gonna be a little bit different. Um, it's more of a video podcast than a presentation. And we hope that you enjoy it. And do I not have my video on? I don't, so let me do that. Um, hang on. Okay, I have my video on, you can see me as well. Okay, great. Um, so it's a little bit different. We're gonna do more of a video podcast than a, than a 30 minute presentation. So we hope you enjoyed this uh, style. And today's topic, as you probably know, is gossip. Um, as some of you also might know, my ombuds colleagues, at the University of Colorado, Denver and Ann Schutz and I have been posting a series of blog posts all about gossip in ombuds, which is our University of Colorado ombuds blog. And so this particular lunch and learn is gonna focus on what gossip is and why we do it. And we are, um, we have the honor of uh, Tyler's presence here and I'm gonna introduce him in just a moment. But first we wanna do a little polling and, and, and lay a little bit of a foundation for today's conversation. So for those of you here, I'm gonna go ahead and launch this first poll. I'm just curious, just to give me kind of a sense how many of you are even familiar with Ombuds? And if you are, how many have been following along with the um, gossip series? Give you a couple seconds. I don't wanna to spend too much time because I really wanna dig in with Tyler here. Okay, so some of you have, some of you maybe know about it, but don't read it. Some of you didn't know about it. So great. So Lisa um, looks like put the link in the chat. So thanks, Lisa. Um, feel free to go ahead and check that out at some point. If you think it's of, in of interest, you can subscribe. And we typically post about every two weeks, every other Wednesday. So thanks. So it looks like a majority of you have never heard of it. So now you have. So I hope you will uh, will check it out. Thanks for doing that poll. Okay. Um, I can share the results real quick if you're interested. All right. So here's the results. 18%. Yes. 15. Don't read it. 67. Didn't even know about it. So there you go. All right. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. So before we get started, quick logistics. Those of you who have been to our lunch and learns know how this works. You are muted, your video is turned off. This is really to reduce distractions. I'm gonna share a few thoughts about um, what we're talking about today. Um, and then we're gonna speak with one of our campus experts on the topic of gossip. We will use polls and I will ask some questions throughout the presentation. So if you haven't already, uh, please go ahead and open up that chat box. And I'm, I'm guessing most people are familiar with Zoom. Um, you can use the chat to answer questions, ask questions. Lisa will be on standby to kind of curate those questions so we can, we can ask them, um, we can address them later on in the presentation. And of course, please know that your name does appear when you chat the entire group and we are recording. So just keep that in mind. Um, if anyone has a specific situation that they want to discuss and they're not comfortable using the chat box, I will share our Ombuds office contact info at the end. So please just give us a call and uh, we can schedule a separate consultation. We aim to keep these at 30 minutes um, to give you a little bit, a bite-sized amount of information and get you back to your day. Um, Tyler and I can stay on a little bit after if people wanna stay on and have more questions, but we will end the official program at 12.30. We are recording, um, as I've mentioned, this is to give as much access as possible. Lisa Neal is here. She's one of our gossip series authors and is available to address, um, help address non-substantive questions that might come up throughout the meeting. And then later today, or probably tomorrow actually, I'll send a follow-up email with some links to references and um, additional information. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Gossip. Before I introduce our guest, I wanna lay a bit of a foundation for our conversation. What is gossip? How is it defined? Well, we've been researching this topic for our blog. And what I've learned is that gossip has many different meanings, a variety of meanings. In her book, Gossip, Organization and Work, author Catherine Wadington, I don't know if any of you have heard of her, she explains that scholars who research gossip um, from a range of diff different disciplines have really had difficulty producing a detached, 
scientific definition of gossip. And this is in part because of its historical negative connotation, but also because it's a pretty elusive activity. It's something that's kind of hard to study in a lab. Um, and it's also a complex phenomenon. So it makes the, all these make it very difficult to define. But I'll share a couple of definitions that have come up with you just to give you a flavor of what we're talking about. One study defined gossip as informal evaluative discourse about an individual who is not present. Another described it as the dissemination of information between two or more people behind the back of a person they may or may not know. And this is typically regarding a situation that they may or may not know anything about. Um, and typically it's addressing information that really has no value to them personally. A definition that I personally really like, I heard on a podcast that I listened to with Michelle Mitchell. She's the chief, get this title, chief culture angel at Hum Kombucha. And she defines gossip. And I like it because it's simple as talking about someone else's experience that is not yours to share. So one thing I want to point out, and I want you to notice in these definitions, is that they're not using words to um, describe the gossip, right? They're not using things like, or the, or the information, I should say. They're not describing the information as good or bad or neutral or truthful, untrue, innocuous, slanderous, right? And that's because, as I'm learning, gossip can be all of that. So real quick, a couple more polls here. Um, and I may cut some out just for the sake of time, but I'm curious how many of you would say you gossip? Go ahead, give me, how many of you think that you gossip? All right, so, so far I'm seeing some, some positive here, I'm not sure. Okay, a couple, not me, yep. Okay. Few more of you coming in here. All right, for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and share the results. So as you can see, a lot of you acknowledge, yeah, like we, we do gossip, and I'm gonna talk more about that in a moment. Some are saying, nope, not me, okay? And some aren't sure. And I, I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that you're probably not sure because it really depends on, well, how are you defining gossip, Liz? What, like, what do you mean? Um, so thank you for doing that. So another poll, I'm just curious is, what percentage of people's conversations do you think could be defined as gossip? And this, this is a multiple choice. Thanks for doing this so quickly, by the way, it helps keep things moving here. Okay, good, good, coming in, all right. So I'll go ahead and end this one and share it too. So those of you right here that guessed 65%, that is what, the research done by Robin Dunbar, she's a, um, or he's actually, I'm sorry, I should say he is a PhD at the University of Liverpool. He's done some research on this. And based on his research, he says 65% of our conversations constitute gossip. So that's a lot, it's a lot of gossip. All right, so let me stop sharing that. All right, so why do we do it? Well, it's important to note that we've been gossiping as human race. Um, since the beginning of time. Anthropologists and evolutionary psychologists will explain that it's really part of being human. In fact, thousands of years ago, our ancestors used gossip as a social tool to garner support against outgroups and to leverage status within the group. At the time, gossip provided valuable information that facilitated survival and thriving and was used to bond with others or to alienate those who were deemed uncooperative. You know, people want to know what neighbors can they trust, what neighbors can't they trust. So it's essentially a social tool that's been around for the survived generations and helps us navigate social settings. So whether we like it or not, humans are wired to gossip. Where we have people, there will be gossip. Now, conventional wisdom might say, don't gossip, right? It does more harm than good. And we all know the allure of being in the know is very attractive. So there are many reasons why we still, with all of our cognitive knowledge about the harms of gossip, still do it. Um, and this is the last thing I'm gonna ask you to do before we uh, meet and talk with Tyler, which is I'm just gonna rattle off a list of about 15 reasons we gossip. As you hear something that you can relate to, either because you've done it or because you've observed it, Let's do a thumbs up and kind of gauge what kinds of gossip we see in our worlds. So I'm going to go fast. 
Um, I'm just going to rattle them off. Just use your reaction and just give me a thumbs up. The reaction should be in your toolbar there. So here we go. To feel like a member of the group, to feel important, to feel superior because I'm jealous, because I'm bored. Let's face it, gossiping can be fun. Because I'm in a fit of rage and I want to use a derogatory comment as my form of retaliation. To wield power or social status as a political strategy for social grooming, to question legitimate goals and actions, to undermine authority, to funnel information and knowledge, to help us make sense of our surroundings, to test new ideas as an early warning sign of problems to come. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna look at the gallery here See um, how many people, how many of you have your thumbs up because you could relate to any of those. Okay, a few of you, a few of you could relate to some of what I said. I know I went fast, so thank you for bearing with me. All right, good. Yeah, so these are the kinds of things we see, and these are the reasons why people gossip. Okay, so for the rest of our time together, I have the good fortune to chat about gossip with our friend and colleague, Tyler Keyworth. Tyler is the Assistant Director of the University of Colorado Boulder's Conflict Resolution Office. So Tyler, do you wanna share a thing or two about your role in your office before we get started? Hi everyone, nice to see everyone today. Um, <clears throat> so I'm Tyler, I work in, with mostly conflicts that folks have on campus. And so that's a lot of times with students and then work with staff and faculty as well as things cross over that way. Um, I also run the restorative justice program at CU Boulder. So if you've heard of that, um, I have my hand in that as well, but we'll be focusing mostly on the conflict resolution work that um, I'm involved with today because that um, definitely, although sometimes restorative justice can have some crossover, crossover with gossip uh, leading folks to make Poor decisions, but uh, we'll kind of stick in the conflict realm of giving people some thoughts on how gossip and conflict are related and kind of what learnings can come from that. Awesome. Thank you. So Tyler, I'm curious. I mentioned earlier that there's all these different definitions of gossip out there. I mean, even the scholars or researchers who like study this for a living, they can't agree on, on one definition of gossip. How do you define gossip in the work you do? Yeah, I think that uh, gossip <clears throat> can be a neutral kind of term in the sense of like, I, I like to think of it in the sense of people are gossiping because they're trying to make sense of the world around them. They've heard information, they're not sure what to do with it, how it fits in with who they are, what it means for their identity, what it means for uh, different information that they're hearing. And I think gossiping helps people to try to make sense of that and think about how do I process this? What kind of who I'm going to ask, you know, talk about this person, see how that went, so I can mm -hmm. make sense of that as well. Um, I think that also gossip can kind of come from a lack of relationship and trust to be more of a negative thing. For example, if <clears throat> Liz and I are friends and I hear something happened with Liz, I would probably investigate. I might text Liz and be like, hey, are you okay? What happened, right? Versus if I don't know Liz and I hear something happened um, to the university associate ombuds, I might be like, oh, what's going on there? And I start talking to other people to try to get information. Um, and so I think that when you have trust and relationship, it's far easier to have more constructive conversations that sometimes in other circumstances might lead to more kind of destructive gossip that, um, that creates judgment and meaning that uh, might not exist otherwise. So I think that trust and relationship can be a, a key thing in warding it off as well. That's right. Uh, that's great. Those are great observations. And yeah, I, I, I would agree. I mean, that's how I see a lot of it too, is people are just trying to make sense, right? And not everyone goes to the source. And so we try to make sense of it in other ways. And, and that's, where, that's where sometimes it can be helpful. Sometimes it can not be helpful. Um, so how do you think in your role um, as the assistant director in conflict resolution, I mean, you're dealing with a lot with students. I know you deal with others as well, but you deal a lot with students. I mean, how do you think as things come to your desk, how does it impact your work and or work environment? Yeah, I think <clears throat> a couple of things that I was thinking of with that question. Um, one is I think that students operate a lot and, and I think people in general operate a lot on what's gonna get them more social credit, right? So um, 
we were working with a student group recently that um, they all got in a bunch of trouble with their the job that they were working in and they all got fired and it was a big deal and ha had a lot of impact and caused a lot of financial hardship and also emotional hardship and, and it was a really difficult thing um, and these students made a mistake and part of the reason they made it was because of the conversations they were having with each other. They were kind of having these negative conversations about like, oh my gosh, I hate this part of my job, this part uh, this part stinks, et cetera, and kind of led to them down a road of making decisions based on kind of the assumption that their employer was out to get them. And so they were kind of making more risky decisions as a result of that. And, and it was really interesting because it kind of, on face value, this decision didn't really make sense. But when you heard the context of kind of the conversations they were having about other people in their unit and department, and then also, you know, like how they were experiencing it as individuals, it kind of created this negative spiral where somebody said something negative and said, oh, they're probably trying to screw us over this way, right? And then, and they got positive social credit for sharing that because everyone is having a negative experience. And then another person would share something negative and then that would be seen as true. And you kind of have this um, with gossip sometimes things we, I think gossip often creates assumptions or truths out of things that folks don't know. And so when you have this kind of like unchecked gossip, you end up with <clears throat> a series of truths that didn't exist prior that are now assumed as true uh, because people have started saying them. And then it, you know, ends up kind of in a telephone game of down the line, somebody else hears it, and then they're no longer at the source. And it sounds like, oh, it already got passed on, therefore it must have validity and truth. So there's this kind of like assumption cycle that happens as well um, that can kind of lead into it. So I think I think the one thing that I see in my work a lot is folks making assumptions about the information that they receive or adding or where they don't know what to think and um, they add in meaning or create meaning out of something that doesn't exist. They're, humans like to create meaning and when we don't understand something, we do what we can to create it. And I think that when folks do that, they're making assumptions a lot of the time and then, um, and then that can be passed on as truth. And then all of a sudden we're starting from a place um, that might lead down a destructive path. Yeah, I don't know if that answered your question, Liz, or- um, No, it's great. No, it got, no, it's great. The story helps paint a picture and we'll get input from the audience too as to you know what questions they have and you know, kind of thought what's on their mind when they think about gossip. We'll have time for that as well. But I think that's great showing, you know, an illustrative example and, and referring to the telephone game. Um, I was listening to a podcast, a gossip podcast, and they just, it was just, you know, a, a simple example of they had different recordings, right, of people sharing the same story. Um, <laughs> And you could just see how quickly it went off the rails, you know, people omitting information, people adding information that was never there, you know, and it turns into this completely different scenario by the end. So I think that's, you know, it's illustrative of what you're what you're talking about. So when that happens, Tyler, in, in your in your mm -hmm. world, in your role, like, how do you address it? What do you do? Yeah, I think there's a couple different ways. So <clears throat> I remember having a conversation with a colleague a couple years ago, and um, they were having a conflict with their with uh, a coworker, and they're having a really difficult time, kind of like making a lot of assumptions about this person's behavior and why they were doing what they were doing. Um, and I remember they went to their supervisor at the time, and the supervisor was like, um, "Well, if you have issues with that individual, you should take them out to lunch." And they were like. Well, I don't want to do that. They're like, well, <laughs> then I don't want to hear about it anymore. And I thought it was an interesting, and although that you know might paint a pretty harsh picture, I think that sometimes we we often don't engage in direct conversation with the folks that we're having uh, trouble with, and and I think that that we often make it other people's problems by like you know complaining to supervisors or talking to our friends and kind of like doing this, doing everything but addressing the person directly. And I think that um, that having a direct conversation might be the most uncomfortable part of the whole process, but it also can create the most positive change. And I think that we we tend to avoid those things because it's uncomfortable. We don't know what's going to happen and there's a lot of unknown, but actually approaching the person and having a quick conversation with them, um, I think can be really helpful and help to address the situation directly. Um, I think another thing is I think that a lot of times like balance can be really important in the terms of conversation. So when I talked about that, um, that friend group um, that all got fired from their jobs, um, part of the issue was that they, the supervisor um, had left the 
um, university. And so they didn't, they all didn't have someone to report to at that time that was close to them. So as a result, they're kind of this chain of gossip was kind of unchecked in the sense of there wasn't somebody there to go, oh, that's actually not what's happening. Let me give you some context. Let me help you understand to fill in those kinds of um, pieces of information that we don't have. So I think that um, as much as context and other uh, and other pieces can be brought in and help people understand why decisions are made, why certain things have happened, I think can be really helpful so that people get accurate information rather than invent um, kind of like what they think could be happening um, based on information that might not be based in reality. Um, so I think that those are kind of like providing balance so that you're having context and people are making decisions out of things that are true. And then also encouraging direct communication is probably the best way to address gossip. Um, for example, let's say, you know, somebody heard about a promotion that Jamal got and Jamal got a promotion. And, you know, often we say to ourselves like things like, oh, Jamal got a promotion. That's an observation. So it's a fact, right? It's something that happened. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, and depending on our relationship with Jamal or experience with Jamal, we might say something like, oh, well, he's just trying to climb the ladder or he's just, you know, he's, I can't believe he's taking that job. It's so different from his current work. Like he probably just wants more money, right? And these are kind of assumptions we make about why someone might do something versus a more positive, a more like positive frame and something that would help reduce negative gossip would be say something like, oh, Jamal got a promotion. That's really interesting. I wonder what led him to make that decision. Maybe I'll ask him. Right. And so going to the source and having a conversation with the individual can be far more helpful and create more constructive dialogue rather than um, people end up creating meaning out of things and connecting the dots where connections may or may not exist. Yeah. Sorry, that was. A yeah, lot of no, that's excellent. Thank you. No, thank you for sharing. I hope people are writing down their questions and taking notes so we can we can we can get to those. Um, that's a great um, example. And just I'll give a plug here. Um, for those of you on the CU Boulder, I know we have folks from all over, but here on the Boulder campus, you may have heard of Crucial Conversations, and I'll put the link to where you can get more information about it in the follow-up email, um, but because, it, because you're right, um, having those direct conversations and actually engaging in dialogue with someone can be really awkward and difficult for, for many reasons. And so having the skills to do that effectively, I think is really important. And so, you know, you can always, of course, come talk to Tyler, you can come talk to ombuds. Um, and there's also great training here on campus for, for how, to, how to go about that. So I think that's a great, um, a great point. And I think you also alluded to something about, you know, sometimes gossip where it could be helpful is it can kind of raise that flag of, oh, people are talking about this, this must be like important to them, or maybe we weren't clear in our communications about something. It can really give leadership also, or anyone for that matter, kind of a tip on where they need to be more transparent, right? Mm -hmm. Or where they need to elaborate and provide more act, you know, information that is factually correct so that these, these different rumor streams or gossip streams don't, get, don't go too far. Um, so that's great. So before we um, move on to questions, I'm just curious, in our last blog post, uh, Teresa Rolicky down at um, University of Colorado Denver posted about an example of where it was really a hidden virtue and she, through gossip, was able to really identify some gaps and issues and help a team really cultivate their culture, um, redesign their work environment, address behaviors that weren't working well for folks. Um, so I don't know, like any examples that you might have of where gossip really allowed you to help either people involved, the university, whatever, anyone. Yeah, I think it kind of relates back to people's experience with conflict a lot of the time. I think that conflict can be really uncomfortable and something that people avoid and um, and it can like often our experience it with it can be really negative. Um, yet on the when we are able to resolve it well and to have productive conversations out of conflict, it can create a place of growth and something that can help us move forward in a positive way and be closer with the folks that um, that we're in conflict with. Uh, you know, I think about some of my best friends. We've had like you know you know serious conflicts before, and and then we get through that and we're like oh wow, okay, I totally understand you so much more. And I think that gossip presents a similar kind of opportunity in the sense of that it raises issues, as you said, that there's kind of like, if we're hearing gossip about something, that means there's not information that, that people have. And there's also not 
Um, or there might be like people might have an issue with something. So for example, if leadership makes some decision and people are upset about it, they're probably gonna talk about it, right? And so I think that like similar to conflict, it represents kind of hotspots that we might need to address. Um, and thinking about that, I, I remember we were working, um, I remember working in a different environment. I was doing a mediation between two um, front desk workers at a city. So they were the two people that you walked into this the city hall and these two people were the people that were supposed to greet you, yet they were in mm -hmm. like overt, horrible conflict with each other. And they had started talking a lot about each other. And there was like all these rumors about one, one person, you know, what they were doing and what the other person was doing. And this kind of like whole thing was, was kind of enveloping the city staff. And we got folks down together and had a conversation. And within like 45 minutes, they were like, oh, you are not this person, you're someone <laughs> different, right? And we're able to learn much more about like what drove the, that other person and what they were about. And like that all these things they had been hearing about them weren't true. Um, and I think that like by having that direct conversation, they were able to really kind of like mend things. And we, we ended up having a second session to check in and see how they were doing. And they came in and they're like, holding each other by the arm and laughing and having a great time. Um, and, you know, what started with a place of them coming in and like, you know, not trying to not talk to each other, assuming the worst in the other person. Um, I think that by giving people the chance to understand each other, build that relationship, trust, and also have direct communication can lead to a totally uh, totally uncharted territory where they they didn't expect to be really good friends and to, you know, enjoy working with each other. Um, and all it took was a little bit of conversation in a productive way that it led to that point. So I thought that was kind of a cool experience. That is. Uh, and uh, I don't know if they're still friends today, but uh, I haven't called that <laughs> CD front office in a while, but um, I hope they're still there as well. Oh, that's a great example. Thank you for sharing that. So I noticed, I'm noticing the time is 1226. Anything that you want to add that I haven't asked you that you really want to, um, a burning desire to share with folks today about your experience with gossip? Yeah, I think the last thing kind of relates to the previous point, just the power of relationship and trust that when we have a relationship and trust, we create, we, the possibilities are much greater than if we don't, because we don't, um, there's something in uh, a psychological theory called fundamental attribution error, which assumes that a lot of times in others and people we don't know well or, or may not like, we assume their behaviors when, when there's something that negative that happened, we assume it was based on their intent or personality versus when we do something negative or when somebody close to us or somebody that's important to us does something negative, we assume it's based on circumstances because they wouldn't have wanted to do that. And I think that the more we can create relationship and build trust amongst people, the less likely we are to fill in those gaps of things we don't know with negative information that's going to create negative gossip and, and really uh, fuel things and make it worse. So I think that like relationship and trust are a way to kind of like build a solid environment to uh, protect against uh, the effects of negative gossip. That's awesome. Well, thanks, Tyler. So great to have you here. I'm going to go ahead and um, I know some folks will have to jump off. If you can stay on, that'd be great. Uh, just to share, um, can you see our ombud slide here? Just wanted to share our information. If you do have questions or want to talk more or want to reach out to us, here's where you reach us. If you need to hop off, fine. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and then turn it over to Lisa to see if we have questions um, about this for Tyler or me or anyone else or things that people want to talk more about. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll stop the share. Um, hopefully people wrote that down. Like I said, I will have a follow-up email as well. Um, Lisa. Hi. What do we have? Hi. Hi. We do not have any questions coming in, but a lot of kudos. Um, one comment, uh, don't share something you wouldn't say to the person you're talking about. So kind of a good golden rule. Um, so not a particular question as of yet. Okay. Anyone who's still here, anyone have a question they want to pose? Thanks, Jerry. I see your yeah. chat coming up. And I'll go ahead, I'm going to stop the recording.